Welcome to the channel folks, Clunkers and Classics, where we are restoring the 68 Chevelle Nomad station wagon. Okay, today's the big day. We're going to put on all new front steering, suspension, and disc brake conversion. Okay, um, last video... I went over all them parts in great detail. We even unboxed them. So if you haven't seen that, if you want to watch the last video. Uh, but of course you'll see them in this video too. But just a little bit more detail in the last video. That's all the stuff here. We got upper and lower new tubular control arm A-frames. Uh, there's all the steering stuff. Center link, idler arm, tie rod ends, all that stuff. We got disc brakes, conversion, the rotors, master cylinder, brake booster, and coil springs and KYB shocks. The only problem I could foresee is I'm probably going to have to go get a coil spring, uh, compressor deal to put them coil springs in and I'm hoping they are they fit this because it said uh, 68 only but they wanted 150 bucks and they had 69 to 72 Chevelle wagon for you know 100 bucks so I bought the 69 to 72 Chevelle wagon ones instead of the 68 only so uh, we may have a problem they may not fit they may be too long or who who knows okay but uh okay so we're gonna tear her apart now i know a lot of people say well why don't you film uh working more i i did i film some stuff when i'm working but it, it's mostly very time consuming uh, set up the camera and then uh, especially the editing part if you just want me to edit out little stuff because if I just set up the camera here I'm gonna be back and forth getting tools I'm gonna be having problems you know rounding off bolts I'm gonna be you know this stuff's been on here 54 years so nothing's gonna be easy nothing's gonna be easy about it so you want to see me struggle you want to see me hammering chiseling stuff off and it's too time consuming and too much time to edit all the little bits of so I, I kind of do my videos I'll just sh uh, tell you what I'm gonna do and then show you what I've done after it's done okay so I'm gonna take the sway bar off first okay two bolts right here one there one behind it on each side now take them off, and then all you got is this end here, which usually these things are, I may have to sawzall and cut it. The new uh, lower control arms have all this new ends on it, bushings and everything. Don't need it. I may just cut it off there just to get it out of the way. Okay? I'll try to unscrew it, save it in case I need a long bolt one of these days. So we're going to take the front sway bar off, okay? Then we're going to take off, we don't have to take all this stuff apart. All we're going to take, take is this off here, you can see the little cotter pin. Take the cotter pin out, unbolt that. You got to use the fork, use a, I'll show you that later. Stick the fork in there, smash it with a hammer, drops right down. Okay, the idle arm, we're replacing that, so we don't have to take this off, we don't have to take the tie rod ends off. Uh, this one here is a little bit pain in the ass, you go in through the back, get a socket and a wrench here, just these two bolts. So you take them two bolts, steering arm, and then the same as the steering arm. Pop the uh, cotter pin off. Buzz that off with an impact. Take your fork here, bang. So the whole thing's gonna come off as one unit. So let's start there. Okay, let me take them two 
big items off and we'll lay them over on the side and we'll line the new stuff up we're not going to put the new stuff on we're just going to kind of put it together so we don't have anything upside down and all that maybe connect connect the tie rods in on the new center link and the idler arm kind of like the old one set it over here get it ready so we don't want to put it on yet we got to put on these these control arms will go on first and then a spindle and then we put the uh, steering stuff on okay so let me get them two off and I will be back okay guys I know we took a couple of minutes uh, instead of using the uh, pickle fork deal I just hit it with a hammer because uh, we're not reusing them anyway if you hit them with a hammer these ends here you'll you'll screw up the threads so if you're reusing them don't do that but anyway everything come out pretty good so we're just gonna lay this over here so we kind of know okay so we can kind of measure the new tie rods and if you ever buy new tie rods if you replace them go ahead and buy them sleeves because you'll sit there for a couple hours heating these and bending them and trying to get the sleeve out where they're only you know a couple of bucks for new ones so you get new sleeves uh whenever you do tie rods makes life a lot easier okay so that's that there pretty simple okay so let me uh, take the sway bar out and we'll see how these bolts come out you can tell this one's already bent like I said I may have to sawzall it but I'll be back okay guys sway bar came out pretty easily weird uh, bolts I thought they were rusted but they're all little weird bolts holding the sway bar in. Sway bar that mount up under here. Uh, so anyway, we'll grab this. Put that right there so we can put it back in the same way. Not upside down or nothing. Okay, so... We got all that now we're gonna take the uh, control arms and shock I don't think we're gonna use them brake lines um, probably go ahead and disconnect these brake lines here because this bottom a frame is just gonna drop down so to take them off and these are going to be the hardest because they're upside down and you can't get an impact well unless you use a swivel um, so anyway same thing tie rods take that little cotter pin out there and this one's all full of dirt and stuff there's one here so you gotta take this bolt off and this bolt off we'll get the brake out of the way and then uh, uh, you have to get the shock out, which is two bolts underneath. And, and right here. Take that off with an impact. You have to use an impact because uh, you try a wrench or socket it, the whole thing just spins. You got to get a good pressure on there. But you got to put the jack, use a floor jack like that, and stick it underneath here. Um, once you get that shock out. Well, we'll go ahead and take the spindle off first. And then we'll put a jack under here, take that shock off. And then let down the jack and the coil spring should slide out of there with very, very little pressure. You don't need a coil spring compressor to take it out. You get a 
use it use it to get them back in um, but you can just stand out of the way stand over on this side of it over here and then let down your jack and if it does fly out it'll fly out over there but it shouldn't it should have enough travel down here to the ground where it just uh, slides out so once that's out then we'll unbolt the a-frame uh, top one is these two bolts here it's gonna be a pain in the ass well once it's off you can lift it up and get a socket in there putting them on is gonna be another problem getting a socket or a wrench in there to hold them uh, and then the bottom one is gonna be these two bolts here go through the bushing but let's get the uh, spindle and the brake line off and I'll get the jack set up and uh, I'll show you that okay so I'll be back okay guys undone the cutter pin and the bolt from the top and the bottom and then this I just use the uh, I got two of them here stick that in there whack it with a hammer and uh, that lifts up okay this brake line actually came off without breaking or anything okay and then I took the little uh, clip out of there and pulled that we're not going to be reusing this but okay so the spindle can actually come off now and then this a-frame here getting kind of dark just take that that bolt there and the uh, that nut and that nut and then top a-frame comes off okay and uh, we can take the spindle off if we can show you here I'm not sure if I get it there or here but basically stick it in there like that Or the okay, okay, guys. Okay, I gotta kind of use two hands here. Okay, well. The little dust shield is uh, holding it. I just screw around with it with two hands. But anyway, you can see, just the dust shield is just kind of wiggle it around or something. Okay, so <clears throat> let me just get that off and then we'll uh, undo the, take the top A-frame off and then uh, take the shock off and then we'll let this down and I'll show you the coal spring how it comes out okay I'll be back okay guys yeah the spindle I just had to wiggle a little bit there uh, here's the upper upper control arm here got that off uh, got the top shock bolt out the two bottom ones are just spinning uh, the whole rubber uh, bushing for the bottom of the shock is uh, gone. So that thing would have been just banging around. But anyway, we're gonna let we're gonna let this jack down. And see what happens. Uh, and we'll just leave it attached to the uh, control arm. We'll let her down slow. Hang on. I 
can probably stand over here. And over here a little bit farther. There's not much tension on it. I can feel it with the jack. Plus the shock should hold it. Okay, I think I'll just take the two bolts. Is it two bolts or? Yeah. I think I'll just take these bolts off here. There doesn't seem to be that much tension on it. Maybe put the jack underneath and we'll just lower it out. Sh lower the A frame and shock and coil all at once. But uh, yeah, I just blew all the dust and everything off, dirt and everything off of here. This. This little thing's about shot. I don't know if I got a new one for that. Um, oh, I think it's built into the new control arm. We'll see. Okay, well, let me get this bottom uh, control arm off, and I'll be back. Okay, guys, that lower control arm, these two bolts here were a bitch getting them out. You couldn't get a impact long enough on that one. You could just use a couple of wrenches. Uh... Anyway, I got it out, and uh, let's go see if this coil spring is the same as the new ones. I don't have a very level floor. Look about the same size to me. Uh, these are flat right here. It's flat. Bottom's round. But the top's flat. But we're using A-frames that are for 64 to 72. So if a 68's got a different A-frame that only fits a flat thing, then I think we're set. Because they're both the same height. Okay. Uh, I think we'll leave that for tonight. It's getting kind of dark. Um, so we're just going to do, we're just going to do uh, this side here first. Make sure we get the, the right, the left, uh, the two lefts on here. There's the old stuff there. So we're going to just get together this here in the morning when it's light out and get that on there. We'll see if we need a coal spring uh, thing or not or see if I can figure it out okay um so yeah that's a plan we'll do that side get all the new stuff on that side and then do this side get all the new stuff and then we'll put the new uh tie rods and center link together and sway bar and put all that in okay so uh we'll see you in the morning okay guys it's next morning uh, there's the old A-frames there. I kind of stuck the top one on loosely. Um, it's got this rubber stopper here that replaces this old decrepit one that was there. Just pulled that out. Okay, now I'm going to get this, the bottom one on here, and we'll just see if we can stick that spring in there and uh, push it up with a jack.
I doubt it, but you never know. I think I remember doing that before on a car and it worked. So we'll cross our fingers and see. Uh, yeah, I was thinking the spring went in the top A frame, but uh, this is where the spring, I don't know if you can see it. There's a little lip around there. I don't think it matters too much if this is flat here. The new ones are round. Uh, we'll try to stick it up in there and see what happens. Okay, there was the shock there. The bushing was completely gone. So, okay, let me uh, put this one in there. And if we can stick the spring in and jack it up, and then we'll have to get the spindle. The spindle will go on on here and here there and there okay so I'll be back okay guys it looks like I'm gonna have to go up to AutoZone or O'Reilly's and get a coil spring compressor get that thing on there uh, these are spindles same part number so I, they're the same left to right but they didn't it didn't come with uh, this deal here, I don't know, knuckle or whatever the hell that thing's called to uh, uh, hook the tie rod to. But they bolt something right there. So I guess I'm going to have to reuse my old one. Um, it did line up. This bottom one was a bitch to uh, get in, to line up to the holes. I had to bang this out a little bit here and here. Slide it up in there, but it eventually did fit. Um, and put them together and the spindle goes on like that and they did line up so did line up um Yeah, so once I get the spring in there, we can continue on with the rest. Okay, I went ahead and took this side off here, but I took the whole assembly. <laughs> I just did the top A frame and the bottom ones. Pulled the whole thing out. So... Okay, so you can see the sun line right there. Sun comes up and it'll start baking me once it gets up to here. So I'm almost done for the morning. I don't know what time it is, 11 o'clock or something. Uh, I don't have to come back out here. So I think I'm going to try to put these two A frames on and then uh, go up to AutoZone O'Reilly's, get the spring compressor, and then. Uh, later tonight when the sun starts going down i'll finish it up hopefully well not finish it finish it but continue on okay so i'll be back okay guys i got this side on two control arms uh this one actually went out a lot easier than the other side slid right up in there i went to buy a spring compressor from uh hover freight but they didn't have any. Uh, they just sell the McPherson strut ones, which. So I got this from AutoZone. I think AutoZone O'Reilly's you can get free. You gotta pay for it, and then you bring it back and you get your money back. So it's free rental. So we're gonna give this a shot, and uh, see if we can get that coil spring in there and I don't know I'm worried about it not having enough weight to push the jack up and compress it all the way but uh, I don't really want to compress this spring all the way you take a chance of the thing breaking loose but oh and uh, before before you put that in here's a little grease fittings here take that tape off uh, make sure you grease these fittings up 
because once you got them in like that, you won't be able to get at them. There's grease fittings all over these. I'll do all these ones later. Grease fittings here, 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 bottom of that ball joint. Okay, so I'm going to grease some fittings up, put the coil springs in the compressor, and see if we can uh, jack that up. So I'll be back. Okay, guys, it's the next morning. This has been one, I think the hardest part's over. It's been a real struggle here getting these uh, springs in there and lined up where I think they're supposed to be. There's a little deal where I thought it's supposed to go in, but there's no way that this uh, you can get this in on the little groove things but i don't know this may be right but i don't i don't think so it's a little tight here and big gap here the shock kind of goes down but it's not rubbing uh i tried every which way i had everything but the kitchen sink here i had come along some straps and uh and then trying to get this uh, up to put put these two uh, nuts on there that's why I had to use a come along from around here strapped all the way over and man it was just a struggle but I got it uh, just working on this side here I took the uh, this deal off the old stuff here and uh, just lining it up. I'm not sure if that backing plate goes on. It probably goes on before it. So it's just kind of loose. Anyway, I got the new shocks in there. And it's kind of loose. I don't have, I left this loose here. I'm going to all tighten these bottom ones since there's no adjustment in them. And then uh, we'll leave these. This one had a lot of shims in both sides. Okay, so I guess we can start on the brakes next. The sun's about to beat down. I put these backing plates and the uh, caliper mounts and all that stuff in. They did come with instructions. I don't think I'll have to use them, but um, anyway, when I come back later today, when the sun starts going down, we'll... Uh, do that and I'm gonna get some pour 15 and uh, paint all these little areas here and uh, all this area here this oh the sway bar too I paint a little bit of the sway bar but I'll clean that up paint it in the mounts and underneath so anyway I'll be back later Okay, guys, uh, they call this the steering arm. Okay, you got to reuse that, but they did give new bolts for it. Okay, this is for the uh, left side. Let's put the right side on. I haven't tightened it up yet. Uh, you got to put the caliper bracket on. They, they give you instructions here right here so you put the caliper bracket on first they supplied this bolt as well and these are the two new ones and then you put the uh, whatever they call it this dust shield or whatever uh, okay so you put that on and then you put your uh, rotor with all the got all the new bearings and seals and everything in there i'm fixing to do that if i got enough grease i'll have to check check if i got another thing of uh grease put all that on there and then you put your caliper on your caliper goes up caliper goes right in right in there after the rotor's on. So, 
Yeah, and then, then the, this goes on the left side. I'm fixing to do that. And then we'll figure out what the rest of these, uh, you got to break. They supply the one brake line, soft one, kind of like this. This is the original one. Uh, went right up to here. So we'll see if anything connects to there. If it doesn't, I have to replace that hard line going all the way up. So we'll figure that out once we get the caliper on. Uh, I got to tighten all these bolts. Probably put on the other side. Uh, yeah, this should be the easy part compared to that. Putting them coil springs in there, that was just something else. I don't know. I don't know how you're supposed to get them in perfect. Um, so yeah, we'll get those brakes on and then we'll put the uh, steering all the steering components together and the new ones just like that and bolt them in there tie rods bolt up to here idle run to these two bolts and the other to the steering arm and uh okay so i'll be back okay guys pretty straightforward we got this side done here Okay, you just take your rotor. It's here, and this is the kit. They actually give you bearings. There's little race bearings here, but they're already built into this rotor. So you start at the back. The race is already there. So you take pack this full of grease stick that in there and then you use this seal here and you just pop that in it popped in pretty easy okay pack it full of grease and then stick it on the rotor on the spindle and then uh, pack this full of grease stick that in I found some, I got a whole can of uh, high temperature disc brake wheel bearing grease, so that should be perfect. Okay, so then you put that on there, and then your little uh, washer like that, your nut, cotter pin, and then your cap, and that's it. And remember, uh, I took my old spindles off and there wasn't even a cotter pin on there so somebody that done a wheel bearing job on it in the past never put it on so don't forget that and you tighten this up you usually tighten it up all the way and then loosen it loosen it just a little bit put your cotter pin in there so uh about to do the other side oh, it's still pretty tight uh They give you these two brake lines here. So uh, I'll, I'll check, see how that fits. But uh, that's pretty tight. I still gotta, I gotta fill up my uh, grease gun right here and uh, pump these bearings full of uh, grease. Okay, so I think I'm gonna do the other side and then uh, we'll put the steering all these steering parts here together. It's everything right there. I showed it a few videos ago. Internet or tie rods, the center link, idler arm, all that stuff. So I'll put that together next after I get that other rotor and stuff done. Okay, I'll be back. Okay, guys, it's next morning. Going down the home stretch here. Uh got this side on yeah these are the regular GM calipers got the old uh, uh, whatever they are hex Allen keys I got all the part numbers I'm not exactly what year which 
not sure what years them calipers and everything fit just in case you know need to go to a parts store and order order parts and brake pads and stuff for it but uh yeah it's got all the all the part numbers and everything just that i'd rather know want to know the year okay uh got the sway bar on there with the new bushings and i use longer bolts put them on oh they had i hope this ain't a sign of things to come but the little this little bumper stop bushing it's crushed you can see had to use <clears throat> to get that coal spring in there you know you put, I put a jack here and jacked it up but it's there's not enough weight on it you know there's no engine or nothing in it and you could you could push down on the frame and it would flex a little bit but it wasn't enough to get to get the uh, ball joints in there it was like you know still needed about another six inches so I used a, a come along and a strap um, and got at the bottom and then put it over top over to the to the frame here and just ratcheted it up till it got enough to get them bolts on there on the ball joints I guess it crushed the this deal anyway I got that on there uh, these are little adjustable sway bar and links so I don't know uh, probably gonna have to wait till I get the engine and everything in there to uh, see how much clearance we got here okay so all we got well we got the master we got everything on there except for the master cylinder uh power brake booster and uh proportioning valve so here's the front front uh steering stuff i'm fixing to lay out the new stuff right here and put that together and get it pretty close uh, and then just to align it you would just I'll just leave these bolts here loose on the new stuff and you just turn it to you know get your get your uh, alignment but it's pretty close it's uh, you know when you start just leave the steering wheel straight so we'll line them up and like I said we'll just uh, eyeball eyeball how straight the rotors are and then later on we do alignment we can just turn them turn them to get the whatever it is the toe in or whatever okay so uh i'm fixing to do that and we'll probably end the video with that and we'll do the brake booster and the brake lines and all that maybe next video i'm gonna see what uh brake lines i actually need uh, I may have to make some, but uh, it'd be a little bit of a pain in the ass to. Well, everything's out from the dash, so it shouldn't be too hard. But if you're doing it with all the dash and the wiring and everything and the uh, booster and all that, so it's just a pain in the ass. And I've been working on this for three or four days straight now, mornings and evenings. I was out here till mid one o'clock in the morning there the other day. Anyway, I'll make that the booster and everything for for another video. And then I'll put on here the uh, screenshot. I did a last video of uh, the eBay, eBay listing that I bought this stuff for. Um, it's not sponsored or anything. I had to pay, I think it was over 1100 bucks for uh, tax and everything for this stuff. So it's about eleven hundred for that, including the the master cylinder and booster, and then all this new stuff here was uh that was in a video a little while ago. This stuff here is about hundred and fifty bucks, 
And then what else? Did I buy anything else? Well, the sway bar bushings were about 16 bucks. So I think that's about it. It's 11, 12, 50. We'll say 1300 bucks for all this stuff. That's quite a bit, but hopefully it'll Oh no, then the uh, coils, the coils and the shocks were extra too. That's uh 100 bucks for the coils, 65 for the shocks. So yeah, it's close to 1500 bucks for all this front front stuff. Hopefully it'll be worth it. Uh Okay, well let me get this front uh, steering stuff done, and I will be back. Okay guys, I got all the steering components on there. And lined it up. Lined it up the best I can. Uh, I showed you on that Jeep how I kind of done it. I just put a stick here, tie it up with some masking tape, do it on both sides, and then took a tape measure from one end to the other. Same on this end, and then adjust the tie rods in so you know you can get it get it pretty close. Okay, so that's it for that. Uh, all I got to do is lube it up. And I got a. Uh, buy these from uh, eBay. I think there's 72 of them for 20 bucks or something. Little brushes. And uh, I use a little can of Pour 15. Buy these little six packs. And uh, I'm just going to touch up all the little areas here. There's a little steering arm, sway bar, top of the control arms, and then underneath. Underneath still kind of rusty. All that. So I'm going to do that, make it look nice and pretty, protect it, and lube it up, and I'll be back. Okay, guys. I think I'm done with uh, with this job. Looks a lot better than here's the all the old parts right here. If anybody wants to buy a piece for, for a souvenir, <laughs> let me know. And watch Goon Squad there. They cut up this Porsche they're working on a thousand pieces uh, body parts like fenders and quarter panels cut out a thousand little pieces and sold them for $175 each <laughs> and uh, I kind of had that idea before they did of uh, selling some parts as a souvenir or something of uh, of this build but you know I'm not a popular channel but I just thought if somebody did that they could make some money at it or something but if I did, it'd be like 25 bucks instead of 175, just enough cover shipping. And but if anybody's interested, uh, coal springs and uh, tie rod ends, stuff like that. I got a what else did I have? My quarter panel patch, the tie rods, a frames, old shocks. I don't know. I'll probably just throw them out. Okay, well, I think that's it for uh, this video. And uh, next video, we'll do the master cylinder, brake booster, hopefully the brake lines, unless I got to buy a bunch of stuff. Uh, those belt moldings for the doors so I can put the door panels on. Another two week delay, they said. They didn't tell me. They waited till it was a day past delivery date, and then I filed on them and said, "Hey, any uh, any word on delivery? Oh, it's going to be another two weeks." So anyway, no big rush on that really. I just want to get them door panels done. They're just all sitting there collecting dust and everything. 
Well, we got that. I got a bunch of stuff to put up uh, under the dash, all the duck work, uh, stuff like that. Uh, I still got underneath here. <clears throat> I don't know if you can see. I still get a bunch of poor 15 to do underneath there, the back part of the floor, mainly the sides and all that. If I can get all that done, we'll start on the LS swap. And uh, first video, I'll be taking the, uh, uh, like I said before last video, just just getting all the wiring and everything I think I can use, cross member motor mounts, uh, the end of the drive shaft, uh, the radiator, uh, condenser, maybe all the AC stuff, all that stuff. It's going to take a while, so that may be a video coming up soon. I'll start stripping that truck down. I kind of hate to. It's a good truck. It's well worth fixing. I make some money on it, but on the other hand, uh, I'm just not going to come across another vehicle like that that I can use all them parts off uh, so cheap. And I feel sorry for them guys to do LS swaps and just buy an engine from a junkyard or something because, man, there's so much little stuff that, like the fuel system, that's another thing, too. I don't know if I could use that fuel system or fuel pump or fuel lines or anything like that. If not, I'll have to buy some new stuff. Uh, but just little stuff like that and the AC, you know, and little connections and all stuff you wouldn't probably get in a junkyard engine so uh that'll be coming up after the after we finish off the brakes we'll get the brake system uh done as best i can uh there may be a delay if i gotta make new lines and everything but we'll try to get that done but anyway tell me what you think like i said none of this is sponsored it's uh, i had to pay all I mentioned it on all the other videos, all the prices and everything. I just think it was about fifteen hundred bucks altogether for all the front end and suspension and brakes and all that stuff. So let me know what you think. Think it's worth it or not? You know, I'm a little bit leery on some of these. Everything's made in China, though, so it's kind of hard to. You know, even that Moog is all made made in china crap now that i heard from a bunch of people so kind of hard to get the good stuff you know the moog they say to replace these ball joints with moog but if moog ain't any better and the only problem see the only problem i'm worried about see those uh, upper ball joints and the other thing that they weren't riveted on they were riveted on there they weren't bolted on so they they were there for 54 years well even though it sat in the field for 32 but for 20 something years and a hundred and something thousand miles they were good so i don't want to be stuck on the side of the road when one of these cheap china ball joints breaks I, I forget which one breaks, whether it's the top or the bottom or both, or they don't last long. I, you know, I don't want them to be lasting 10 or 20,000 miles, and especially when I'm going to be doing a bunch of traveling. It's not something you can fix on the side of the road, especially with that bottom A-frame, unless you bring a lot of, a lot of equipment to take that bottom A-frame off and a press, press it out. So that's the only thing I'm leery about. Other than that, uh, I think they'll be okay. You know, brake brake parts and stuff readily available. If you can break down on that, or you can drive it, you know, with a bad something or rather on it. But when you get a busted ball joint, you're kind of screwed, unless you you know got a shop, tow it to a shop, and anyway. Uh... I guess that's it for this video so uh like comment share subscribe if you haven't and uh we'll see y'all next video thanks everybody for watching <laughs>